So uh, server types. Uh, any questions about the performance? No? Okay. Okay, uh, server types will have different servers and then uh, different requirements for that. So nowadays we have database servers, we have application servers, we have uh, database web uh, web servers. Web servers, typical, uh, there are various uh, web servers. What we have else? We have um, file, file servers. Okay, so uh, and the, uh, streaming servers, okay, so uh, different kind of servers, and uh, the requirements for the services might, might differ from each other. From each other. And uh, uh, this servers might be located on one machine, on one piece of hardware, maybe on different ones, actually, load might be spread across different uh, machines. Uh, a database servers, a transaction server, and application server. Transaction server, basically servers which are handling transactions, typical database transactions. We cover transactions, we actually attach transactions during the SQL class. Okay, so you should have an uh, understanding what a transaction is. But that's uh, what uh, a transaction server is responsible for, is actually making sure that a set of uh, uh, database uh, commands executed, like, uh, executed successfully as a whole. This is uh, the definition of the server. Transaction servers, we are not going into this one. Uh, uh, essentially, is that transaction servers typically, I mean, have, have huge requirements for the CPU and the resources. Uh, application servers also uh, uh, responsible for applications, and they may host application which might be it might be SaaS, uh, software as a service. The hosting that, or maybe actually uh, uh, locating the, uh, collecting the, uh, the data for 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 the workup on a backend server. Uh, may may come in different flavor and different uh, uh, different formats. But I'm not going to discuss this in details. So uh, uh, IBM servers. IBM is actually a very big manufacturer of various servers, technology servers high-end servers, okay, they typically come from IBM. Uh, uh, I'm not going to cover that. I'm not going to cover that. Uh, business of expectations from IT. That's what you may uh, hear when uh, you work in a company and then you have company meeting, and uh, especially at the beginning when there's a the startup, they may uh, contact you explicitly what they require from the uh, IT. You might be part of me, you might be very close to IT in your goals. So that's why it's good to know what uh, next group is visible. So, uh, and then uh, what, what says that uh, existing functionality aligned system are not, a, uh, I mean, uh, uh, application need to provide a consistent user interface. Uh, that's actually not for IT. This is from, uh, from development, I would say. This is from the problem. Uh, application complexity needs to be hidden. That's a requirement for development. Basically, whatever calcul calculations you do, that should be completely hidden. So, uh, for example, let's assume you are requesting data about the historical data about the earthquakes. Okay? So you don't need to uh, show this information like CPU usage time was such a, CPU was used 50% of the time, this database was connected, this database is frozen correctly, and this one actually did not respond. You don't need to then the user. What the user is interested in is that he requests the historical data for this region and he gets this data. That's it. Okay? Maybe he will uh, show will be shown the spinny, which says the process, I mean, uh, request is in progress, but that's pretty much it. Okay? So you don't need to show all these uh, details. And then uh, user interaction might be, for, must be flexible. So it means that if the um, uh, calculation takes a long time, users should be able to terminate that. Okay, so you know what I like to terminate it. Um, consistent information across all applications. That's also very important because if it's not the case, user may think that he's working with the two different applications, which is actually very bad experience, and might be lost. Because user might be used to one uh, interface, and say he may be using year after year, and then if you're changing suddenly some pages, you say, what, what, what happened? Actually, I navigated a different page or not? Okay, so that's very important. And then uh, 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 this is actually uh, mostly uh, 
skip this. This is not a thing that I have to remove that. Browsers on the web. Let's talk about browsers. Okay. So uh, all interactions to the web goes through the special applications, which are called browsers. And uh, we have uh, several browsers uh, available. And then uh, we have to test with these browsers, because browsers differ from each other. And we should know, uh, we should know that. This is actually called, uh, creates golden opportunity for key engineers, because this is, uh, this uh, uh, cross-browser testing can be done only manually. And you have to be able to, I mean, you, you have to do it manually in most of the cases. Um, so uh, starting with the web testing, what you do is then you start with the planning, as uh, everything else, and then you're disturbing the audience. So for example, uh, you have to define who your application is uh, uh, relevant to. Okay? This is very important because uh, based on that, you may actually design of the UI elements, design of the I mean, workflow might be different. Okay. And uh, you have not to rely on assumptions. This is very dangerous because uh, that would happen many times. So one good example of this is the Macintosh market. Okay. So I work, for, I work for the company who had resources to create application on the Macintoshes. And they say, you know what, we'll skip that in the Macintosh version. We'll actually stick to the PC. Okay. And uh, after a while, they realized that they lose uh, a lot of uh, users. Uh, they got a lot of complaints. And finally, they had to implement that Macintosh. That was not a resource problem, because they had resources to pay for Mac. They simply didn't find that. They say, uh, uh, ignore that. Especially nowadays, when the uh, percentage of Mac users is increasing, growing. Okay, uh, so browsers, we actually, this list is a uh, little bit outdated, right? <laughs> We have to update this list. Let's not do that right now. Uh, because I created this while ago. Oh, I created this. So, yeah. So let's let's uh, talk about this uh, browser. So Netscape, we can eliminate this, right? Uh, it's pretty much history. We have Chrome. Okay. Opera uh, might be. So what we have in Opera, we have Safari. Okay? So instead of a my we have uh, Firefox. Right? Oh we have that. Well, what we can put here. Uh, what's in popular also? I think that's pretty much it, right? Sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it means that from uh, yeah, it's effective. So it means that this situation is changing. And then when, at the time when I prepared this slide, actually a lot of information is already done. So let's, <coughs> let's give, for example, is a history, complete history. No one is using it today. Uh, I, it, it's funny because uh, I remember at the time when it was very popular, uh, they also opened the user. I mean, they actually like to attract people saying, you know what, if you open, if you uh, download the Netscape browser, we can open your email account, pretty much like Hotmail account, and that account will be valid for the rest of your life. Okay? <laughs> now they are out of business, uh, almost, uh, and then <laughs> I don't know what happened with this email account. But anyway, uh, this situation changes, and then the relative position of these browsers, actually the market share of these browsers, is constantly changing, almost on a daily basis. So how they calculate that? How they calculate, for example, that kernel occupies probably, say, 25% or 35% of the market? How do you do that? You ask marketeers to call you home and ask that question, and what browser you use. And then if you remember that, <laughs> you can answer. I think there's a way to capture uh, from what browser the request is uh, coming. Exactly. Like so what happens is that they analyze the log files on the server. That's also a very interesting area which we're going to touch. Essentially, every time you uh, request information from the server, this information about your request is logged. It's saved in a special file which is called server log. And in this server log, the following information is stored, the date and time when you made the request, and this is typically GMP time. 
uh, most of the servers working on GMT card, not on the local part. So it means that if you analyze the local file, make sure that you have this six hour, um, subtract six hour difference, okay, just to get the right time. Uh, second is that information about the browser, which browser requested this information is also low. And also information about the success, if uh, a server could successfully serve your request. Okay? This information is local in the log file. And log file actually can grow pretty big. Like, for example, Microsoft server creates approximately 300 megabyte log file a day. Okay? It's just 300 megabyte file. Okay? Just a log file. Just like every request with one line, just imagine how many requests it has. Okay. So uh, it means that if you analyze the log files from the major servers, you can create this statistic pretty accurately. Okay. Because uh, internet servers which can contribute maybe to 95% of internet traffic, then definitely uh, you can make a more or less accurate, uh, accurate get your accurate information. Okay. So we are going to do that. We are going to we can actually retrieve this information, or you, you can Google that, say market share of browsers if you uh, punch that you'll get an answer. Okay, but nowadays, uh, we have five browsers, more or less, and we are going to test with these browsers. So what's the difference between these? So what do you think? From your personal experience. So you probably have your favorite browser, right? Yeah. Okay. Can you explain why it's your favorite one? So why you like it? It's fast. Interface. Faster, and maybe interface. Uh, interface. The difference in interface maybe nice, nicely colored, mm -hmm. right? Much it? Yeah, they uh, don't have much. Right. Sorry. Does it block the content? Buggy. Does it block the content? Like, <laughs> Ie, it, it always keeps asking you, do you want the pop-ups to get out or not? Uh, yeah, user-friendliness, yeah. I would say. Okay, so uh, it, it's configurable, but typically uh, it's actually the interface which plays a role when the user chooses that, chooses the given browser, and also by, I mean in the presence of the box. So my, Internet Explorer is uh, typically not handling JavaScript well yeah. correctly. Okay, so what it means that if you have a page which a lot of which is heavily uh, reliant on the JavaScript, uh, that page may may be buggy because we have a uh, memory leak on JavaScript on the Internet Explorer, okay, here, there, okay? So uh, the <coughs> rendering is not correct. Maybe the latest one, I didn't test the absolute latest one, uh, but um, bef before, say, 7, 8, and 9, they, they have problems. Right? Chrome is actually handling JavaScript uh, quite well, but differently than other browsers, okay? So if you're happy, besides that, Chrome pre presents a much uh, bigger space for the web page, right? It's not overshadowed by, say, uh, two bars, uh, menu, menu bars, address bars, and so on. And also handling, handling the uh, pop-ups nice, nice, very nice way. Okay. Opera, uh, Safari is basically uh, mostly existing on Macintosh, right? Macintosh users uh, like, like that. And uh, some people like that when you open a new tab, it presents you the history of your browsing as a pages, a pages surrounding you. So some people like that. I like that. Okay, you can actually always go and look the history and the way it looked. Okay, so all browsers keep history, but uh, Safari actually presents in the graphic of one, right? Nice one. And Mozilla is uh, was popular because it supported. It actually created at a time when um, uh, uh, encoding compa compatibility was bad, basically. Uh, uh, browser could not automatically detect the encoding. And then it took sometimes efforts to so this is in check the settings to, to get the page showing correctly. Okay, Mozilla actually supporting a lot of encodings that was built in from the beginning, and uh, it has uh, excellent uh, support of these uh, different pages, the different encodings. Okay, it has uh, uh, constant pros for each browser, and you should be aware of that. But from QA point of view, you are going to be asked to test this multi browser compatibility. Either automatic way or manual way, either way, but you have to test that because if you are testing your web pages, you have to test all these browsers. Why? Because people will write, they're not just using one browser, they're using a many browsers. Yeah. 
Exactly, because you have absolutely no control what user is going to use to view your page. This is also in contrast to the, uh, to the Windows environment when you have guaranteed that, right? Because you can create a software on the Windows which will work exclusively on Windows Server. You can do that. You can actually create the software saying, you know what, if user runs it on a, the operation system other than Windows 7 Service Pack 1, don't show the UI. Show error message saying, you know, you cannot use it. You can do that. In that case, you have full control over the, over the user environment. Okay? And if you need to support 64 bits or 32 bits, you can create different installers and place on the internet and then ask users to download appropriate installers. That's what you face. If you download something, or some freeware or shareware, you actually be asked to provide the, actually select the appropriate installer, right? Because in that case, you have absolute full control of that uh, application. In this case, you don't have that control. Absolutely no control. So a user may actually choose any of these browsers, plus user may also use a different operation system, right? So what it means in practice, is that you have uh, an error, actually two-dimensional array of uh, matrix, okay, two-dimensional matrix. One axis will be operation system, and another axis will be the browser. So you have uh, all, all, all uh, these possibilities here, and then you have different versions of operation system and different versions of browsers, so it actually will create a big, big matrix, test which you have to test. Good luck if you have uh, uh, the test cases automated. In that case, it's basically after an additional parameter and then you run it. But if you don't have that possibility, uh, typically you can do that with a Selenium. Selenium is actually good at that. If you uh, have a Selenium uh, server, Selenium server can handle different browsers. It supports a lot of huge combination of different browsers. You can do that. Uh, anyway, uh, this is actually handling Netscape browser. So this is a piece of history. <laughs> When I created this slide, that was 2009. That was some, some people are still using that in that scale. But essentially, uh, what actually uh, doomed this browser is that a lot of, uh, I mean, the header part is huge. Okay, so uh, you have uh, put a lot of activities here, a lot of, uh, a lot of functionality here, and uh, some of the functionality even removed from you. But it was, I remember previously, it was also. Uh, button for creating web page. For example, if you like to create a web page, it offers you HTML editor. Okay, so you can go and edit HTML code. So uh, that was also a good thing. But here you have pretty much, uh, I mean, as I said, too much. Okay, and it was not specifically fast browser, uh, but I use it for some purpose. I, I, I don't remember why, but I, I needed this. Okay, I needed Netscape browser. And it's not recent. Anyway, this is history. Uh, Opera browser, uh, at the time when I wrote this uh, slide, it occupied 4% of the market, okay? And the reason uh, is that um, it was available on uh, several machines, including Linux machines, which is uh, also good, good, uh, uh, I mean, uh, contributed to the popularity. And uh, it was fastest on all browsers, because it was running on Linux, probably because of that and was available in many languages. So people actually who are very, uh, very patriotic and like to use every all software on their own language, they actually, for example, Celtic or uh, Swedish, they might use uh, Opera. But this is actually slowly going out because major browsers now are customizable, okay, and, and uh, you, can, you can also modify most of the Firefox to make it customized. So it's not uh, good anymore, because it's not a factor anymore. Okay, uh, if you check Opera browser, maybe maybe one percent nowadays. Okay, well, if not less. Okay, so it, this statistic changes drastically. So this is the Opera browser. Can't look like. Uh, I think it looks like uh, resembles uh, Internet Explorer. Some details. Okay, so close to that. Uh, we don't need to do this. Uh, we have a Maya browser, uh, 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 also popularity uh, was contributed to the fact that it was available on some uh, Unix machines, okay, that's the, that's the sole reason, otherwise it will not survive a harsh competition. Uh, this is the Maya browser, 
uh, features of this browser is that it allows you to kind of a virtual keyboard and uh, key tabs here, and uh, some functionality like translation or whatever, uh, available and some uh, very easy customizable, basically increasing, decreasing font size done very easily here in graphical. But that's not a big deal. Uh, that cannot be contributed to the success anymore. So I think it's uh, almost done. So uh, Mozilla browser. Uh, next one is still very popular. Uh, and then uh, why it became popular? Because first of all, it contributed the open uh, source project. It means that you would, uh, were able to uh, 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 modify it if you need to. I remember this was very interesting because that's a real story. One very rich man uh, uh, asked his IT engineer to install browser, but he said, you know, I like to have paid browser. I like to pay for that. And then the engineer tried to convince him that you know browsers does not do not cost much. I mean, they, 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 they don't cost any money. Okay, they are free. You basically download and install it. But that rich man was actually very persistent. So you know what? I like to have a persistent kind of a paid browser, so it will work better than free versions. Okay. So what the engineer did actually he modified the Mozilla Firefox, customized that, and then including the payment you know, <laughs> <laughs> and sold it. So uh, that's funny, but it was possible to do it in Mozilla. Good luck if you like to do it with Internet Explorer. You could not. Okay, with Mozilla Firefox, you can. Okay, if you understand a little bit coding, you can do that. So uh, Mozilla Firefox was available on um, various different uh, operational systems, which also a very big factor, I'm believing, and not only on Linux. It's available on Windows and Mac platforms, which are most uh, most popular platforms. And then uh, can be built on other uh, dozen other platforms because source is available. Okay? You can download the source and try to build yourself on that platform. And uh, you can customize it. Okay? You can customize language. And uh, the reason it's available on many different platforms because uh, people from different countries contributed to the Mozilla Firefox. It's not only created in it's not created in one country, but different programmers contributed to that. And they, they also uh, contribute to the customization, the localization of this browser, localization with more exact. Okay? Including where with uh, languages like Prosa and Zulu. Yeah. <laughs> okay? Now, uh, functionality comparison, comparison, this is actually also a historical table. It's not keeping good anymore because I created it a while ago. Nowadays, uh, might be some Internet Explorer may provide some uh, superior functionality compared with other versions, but this is the, this time when the Internet Explorer was the latest one, okay? Not, uh, not good anymore, because no one is probably using 7 nowadays, right? Uh, so minimum version is 8. And uh, the major factors here is that uh, we're talking about JavaScript, okay? This is the uh, first key issue before, but it's very important nowadays, because Barely any page does not contain JavaScript. Okay? Most of the pages nowadays contain JavaScript in some way or another. Okay? And this is actually a tendency in the uh, Internet that uh, use more and more JavaScript. Okay? Uh, why is it so? Because they created JavaScript libraries which allow you to create remarkable applications. I hope we have time. Well, I'll show you. I'll demo it for you. Okay, remarkable applications which was not possible to do it before. But you know, the rich, the richness, I mean, the uh, UI richness of this application is compatible with the Windows application, okay? And uh, since these libraries are widely used, and browsers are capable of showing this Java as a script output, then uh, uh, the support of JavaScript becoming a key factor in the browser for each other. Because if browser cannot support JavaScript somehow, and it's not supporting fully, then uh, this browser definitely has uh, losing, losing the browser board. Okay. Next uh, uh, item, next factor is uh, how you uh, support add-on support. Okay. How e easy to customize some plugins and uh, connect to the browser. Okay. Mozilla Firefox is probably the best in that case because it's uh, highly customizable. If you are not happy with the uh, add-on support, then you can go, always go and modify the code because it's open source. But even uh, doing that, uh, even not doing that, you can create a multiple uh, add-ons and then install it. So you probably noticed that if you work with Mozilla Firefox, it offers to install different plugins 
One of them is actually very good, it's Xmarks plugin, which allow you browse uh, uh, bookmarks available on any machine. Okay? So it means that if you, for example, working on a given machine and bookmark several pages, then you go another machine, this bookmark will be available for you because these are user specific, not machine specific. Okay? So this is actually a very good one. And plugins like that, many other plugins like that, okay, very useful. So, and it's very easy to install and upgrade and uh, just connect to the plugins. And Internet Explorer is not so easy. Okay, it is part, but not easy. Uh, next item, which might be the uh, next popularity, is the phishing filter. Okay, so basically it's ability of detecting the bogus web pages and filter out. Okay, not a lot of users to access that because this is talking about security, and then close to that is a security breach, okay? Uh, is the browser uh, open to security? I mean, how, how many security threats or uh, how, how big vulnerability the browser, the browser has? Uh, and uh, what else? I think type of browsing is more or less standard nowadays because we can eliminate it, and that's why we can eliminate these types, because types are available on no browsers. Uh, full page zoom might be, um, and then uh, after after that we create uh, I mean they created a, a test for browsers basically this is a set of tests which are called uh, which called acid test okay as acidity test okay so it means that compared with a physical book when you put something in acid and if it dissolves very quickly it means that it's very poor like it can fully stand acidity okay pretty much the same idea was for a browser they actually trying to the test the browser, load and stress test the browser, and run for different tests. And these tests are called as a two as a three that define set of tests. And the based on this uh, acidity, they have to do only two flags, pass or fail. So in this particular case, we are talking about 2009, and we are talking about Internet Explorer. Internet Explorer did not pass this acidity test, okay, as acid two. As a three test, it has some of uh, some quantitative values here, not only quantitative, uh, but quantitative values. So um, you can go ahead and look and uh, Google it, see what acid uh, tests are. Typically, you are not involved in that. Okay, and QA engineers most probably want that not involved in the city of the testing, and but uh, nevertheless, you should be aware of that. Okay, because when when developers gather in the lunchroom during the break. And you'll be part of the blog, <laughs> and they're going to talk about the city that has a should be able to understand. That's for informational purposes only. Okay? Most probably you will not be involved in that. So, um, cross browser testing is very important part of your testing. It's probably one of the few test cases you have to do in the first, uh, the first place. Okay? Probably after immediately after smoke test and one of the browser then you have to think about the cross-browser testing. This is very crucial because uh, eventually if uh, your application does not work on one browser, you cannot release that software. Because on the top of your page, you cannot say that. You know, users who like Chrome browser, please don't visit us. <laughs> it's very naive. You cannot do that. Okay? And they cannot physically block them because they, you cannot block users from doing that. So uh, it means that they have to test. What it means is that uh, if, the, uh, if you definitely need to release the software and you know that it's not working on a Chrome, you at least should know about it. Okay? You can, uh, in, in a worst case scenario, you can say, you know what, uh, please use Mozilla or, Mozilla or Chrome browsers to view our page. Okay? They cannot say we don't support Internet Explorer, you cannot do that. But at least they put that disclaimer saying, you know what, use Chrome and Mozilla for viewing our page. It means that if a customer is dissatisfied and using the other browser like Safari and nothing comes out, then uh, at least they could say, could not say, no, I'm sorry. Say, you know what, we put this disclaimer on the front page. It's out here. Okay. It happened with me, actually. I was visiting one page today, uh, and then what happens is that uh, I was visiting with uh, Safari and uh, Firefox. And the page was navigated, it has a link, it had a link, and then it was supposed to navigate to some other page and uh, based on my selection, okay? And it doesn't matter what I selected, it always navigated to the same link, which I hate, okay? And then I call this person and say, you know what, something is wrong with you. I said, oh, wait a second, what browser you use? Don't, don't use uh, Chrome. I said, okay, I'm not using Chrome, I'm using Safari and I'm using Firefox. 
said, oh yeah, uh, that, that's a glitch. Okay, and then I say, okay, can you at least send me a hard printed material or send a link to uh, where I can read them? That was a very big glitch, actually. Depending on the, I mean, you're supposed to make a selection based on selection, you're supposed to get different results, but it doesn't matter what you select, it goes straight over there. The reason is that that uh, website was not compatible with Macintosh platform. Okay, if I was working for Macintosh, it was not supported. Okay, so that's, that was that glitch. You say, do you have Windows box? Say not at this point. <laughs> but that's that's stupid way. You can just do you have Windows about it. Also, you may have several you know, items in your pocket to get cheap chips. So you have to test that. You have to test the browsers and you have to test the uh, operation system. Because you may think okay, well, operation system doesn't matter because if you have Safari on on, internet, uh, on, uh, on uh, Windows, Windows yeah. and Safari on the Macintosh will be the same, yeah. it is not. Okay? These browsers are just different pieces of software. Okay, not quite often you see the defects, but nevertheless you may may find. I think you find that that's a very good, good and very thick defect part. Okay, uh, said so that. Uh, here is the what uh, what happens is that there is a site which is uh, located on the this address. Uh, what this site does is actually they offer a service, but they also have a kind of you can try this service. So you can specify browsers which you like to test your site. You submit your site and then specify what browsers you like to test. And then this site will run all these tests for all these browser compilation. Probably have more checkboxes now, okay? that was a while ago. And then can they come up with the suggestions? Okay? Uh, I don't know how they test. I suspect that they test with Selenium. Okay? I suspect that. Because Selenium is capable of verified uh, or device. What they do actually they probably run with one browser, capture the output, and then use this output as a baseline for all other browsers. I think it is possible. Okay. So nevertheless, you can uh, you can get this information back. Okay. So what they can provide is that the shift of the UI elements, the text, and so on, actual information, and so on. So um, you can use so. Uh, Besides that, web pages, as we already agree, contain some uh, scripting uh, scripting languages. Most probably that will be JavaScript. This is abbreviated as JS, uh, VBScript, and some other scripts might be. Okay, so and then they can interact uh, uh, interact themselves with the web server in a synchronous or synchronous manner, uh, and also can prevent some. Uh, I mean, uh, can increase the complexity of the page. For example, if the browser does not support fully JavaScript and with some problems on Internet Explorer, then it will produce additional defects right, that the application has to test that and developers have to fix that. They have to fix that. Okay. So that's another problem. That's what we already covered that web pages use a single page paradigm because we always work with the page which is loaded. Okay. There is no history of that and there is no permanent connection. And also, we don't have hierarchy of the objects, and we don't have model dialog boxes, or in that case, as a, as a, okay? no modality is preserved in the back. Um, quite often, the back button. Okay? So you cannot prevent user from clicking back button. Okay? At any given moment of time, user can click on back button, but uh, not necessarily your server will support that. Okay? So uh, you've probably seen some cases when you submit your transaction, you're purchasing something online, and that page is still saying, you know, explicitly, please don't use your back button or don't submit it again. Okay? Your problem, your actually your request is in process. Okay? So why is it done? Why is it so? Can you send another request to the server? Another submission? So you don't uh, do it twice. Exactly. So you don't do it twice. For another reason? The, sub, the request will be selected twice to the server. And uh, if you are purchasing something, then the transaction will be completed and will be charged again. Actually, uh, transaction servers uh, have protection again. They have protection against that. For example, yes, all bank operations, they check uh, about your, your purchases. And if the purchase of the same amount coming within some period of time, they automatically cancel that, okay? But nevertheless, you put a load on a set because original server which handles your request, okay? Nevertheless, will accept your request. 
Second thing is that uh, the page you which remember whatever you have that's that's a predictable situation. Uh, here is the reason for that. You may navigate through the dynamically generated pages, and that page may be generated based on the previous information you submit, or based on uh, some information you have on the page. Now, in uh, in the case if you click on the back button, that page may be gone. It may not be existed on the server anymore. So what you see, you say a page is not available anymore, something like that. You don't get error code, but you say page is not available. So please uh, try to log in again or do something else. That's typically what it is. So that increased, increases the complexity of testing. For example, when you're testing Windows application, testing uh, WordPad will be pretty easy, right? You tap something, you do you work this model dialog box, make sure that it's modeled, shut down, and the test case is done. In the browser case, there may be a uh, number of test cases like that. So you have to test the back button, and you have to test the uh, uh, I mean, uh, back and uh, uh, the submission, okay, for the back, same time. So when you get uh, error, I mean, when the page is not available, that might be valid, because that might be the feature of the application, not necessarily you have to make uh, put all, all efforts so the page will be visible. Not the case, okay? But in that case, you have to instruct the user saying and explicitly saying you have to do this. Don't you don't press back button. Don't do this and this. Otherwise, uh, you will not you will navigate to the page to, which does not exist. Okay? One uh, specific example of that: if you uh, like, if the validation is not done correctly, so you fill out a lot of uh, fields, and then you submit your page. Okay. You go to some uh, ne to the next page when, for example, you have to specify the amount of items you purchase. Okay. Then you say, okay, I change my mind. Maybe I like not to ship it to my, uh, to my home address, but somewhere else. You go back. The page is presented to you, but information is completely gone from there. Okay. So this is the, this is default behavior because browser does not remember the previous values of the database. It is not supposed to remember it. It can present you the page which you navigate to, but it's not guaranteed to present you these values, which is very irritating. That's a default behavior of the browser, but nevertheless, you experience that, and that might be a disturbing behavior. So what you need to do is just develop, you need to create this, uh, kind of keep these uh, values in the memory. Every time you access that first page within a given interval of time, they will be restored and, and inserted into the text. Okay? And, but this, uh, this uh, it, mean, it means that it should be tested. It's not coming by default, and that will be additional activities for QA engineers. You have to make sure that you know, if the are inserted and you navigate it from that page, and this browser or web page allows you to go back somehow, these values are not erased. Okay, these values are still there. So it means that the developer should see it and code that. It's not coming by default. Okay. Um, that's what uh, this uh, statement uh, uh, illustrates. Uh, now, uh, ready to fly is <laughs> this. This link probably was not going to work, but what happens is that they they have a job description and job opening for key engineers who can do that. They can cross browsers, test this function, and whatever we cover. Okay, so that's why we say ready to fly because if you know that, you could apply to this position. But this position is long gone. They probably <laughs> have to find it. <laughs> they probably hired someone. Yeah, we, 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 I have to find another job description just to put here. Uh, and here's the matrix. Uh, definitely you can uh, update this matrix. It's not the Firefox 2 or 3. You can put, let's say, uh, latest version matrix. And, um, yeah. and then Safari also uh, operating with Mavis, putting Chrome instead. Internet 7 and 6 might be also history of the 9 and 10. Yeah. So, and then uh, you can create this matrix and then you can uh, create the operation system here. The uh, operation system also must be updated. This thing you can eliminate completely. Uh, 2003 also can come uh, there as well as 2000. So you are talking about XP, Windows 7 uh, with, uh, with and without service pack 1. And then Macintosh, you can put a couple of operation system for Macintosh. Pretty much you can preserve the uh, number of rows and uh, columns here. So then you realize that if you have 10 pages, as you design as a smoke test for the application, that will put you a substantial amount of work you have to do. Okay? And if you have so sort of weekly release schedule, okay, 
the application is released on a weekly basis, you can just have an idea of how much work should be done. Okay? So uh, you have to, when you're going to test the web pages, you're not just only testing the how text fields are looked, and, uh, but also testing the functionality ones, including the back button, including the ability to register user, access the user access uh, area, and so on. So, so it's basically pretty substantial. Okay? Work. We can automate some of the tasks here, but not, not all tasks. Okay? Some of them cannot be automated. The solution is that, you know, if you like to test this uh, compatibility, so uh, again, as, as we did, we, you, have, you can use Selenium, which will emulate a lot of browsers. You can have Selenium server, or if you are going, when you're going to, to do it manually, you have to use virtualization. You have to use virtual machines. In this case, VMware might be your choice, number one. Okay? This is actually very powerful. Uh, a, very, uh, I mean, a very affordable price. I think it's around two hundred dollars for license, right? For being aware, but it will allow you to emulate a lot of operation system model. Like I said, that's very easy to develop. And if you have powerful host, you can actually boot several uh, operation system at the same time. You can do that. It's very very powerful. Now, uh, check the uh, checklist. Uh, you can what you can do. You can create different checklists. This is basically. Uh, uh, an idea, it's not the ultimate solution. So uh, you can create a checklist, for example, validate the HTML in different browsers and different operation systems. You have to validate the cascading style sheets uh, because, if, for example, if the UI looks a little suspicious and not as expected, you have to look at the CSS because the most probably now this, uh, everything which is uh, you send on the web page is done using cascading style sheets. And you have to check for a broken links. That your task can be automated and should be automated. Uh, what else you can add? You can add uh, functionality testing, for example, user registration, user accessibility, the different areas, uh, able to be able to put a place in order if your site is offering the uh, online order and so on, which will go under functionality testing here. So. Um, Flexibility and uh, how uh, you try different window sizes. If you, for example, resize your window size, what happens to that? Okay, and how you try with the various font sizes. Very classical example happened to me. I actually, I bring up example every every time. It's not the case anymore. What happened is that ten years ago, I had a problem with my video card, and the video card was actually stopped working. Okay. Uh, uh, what happened is that the, bra uh, the, the driver for video card driver was corrupted. Okay? So what happened is that I opened the uh, uh, box, the Windows box. I just realized that I have Intel video card. I said, what's the big deal? Okay, I'll go to the uh, in Intel website, download that driver, and I think it will be okay. Right? So uh, not the case. I was able to navigate to the Intel website, but since the driver was uh, corrupted, I was able to see this uh, uh, website only in one resolution. It's 400 by 600, it's minimum resolution, and only in monochromatic uh, format. Okay? So uh, I was not able to select the country, and I was not able to select my type, my product, because this uh, element is kind of hidden or whatever. It was very difficult, and I was not able to do that. When I visited the same site uh, from different machines, I said, what's the, what's the way? Is this the same site? It's actually completely inaccessible from the in black and white or this you know, color. Okay? So what it means that they didn't test the this situation, but for them it's actually very important because they cannot guarantee that the users will access their website in, uh, in uh, actually from the normal, normal browser with the full color. Okay? They should realize this case. It's a very well, actually valuable test case for them because uh, if uh, the driver was available, I would save a lot of time as we being, being able to download it, install it, and start using it. But what I had to do, I had to go to other machine, which is on my work, uh, and then download it from there, to bring it home. It actually spent a lot of time there. Now, uh, they, they improved the website. They actually improved it drastically. Nowadays, you can access it. Actually, the accessibility is definitely higher. But at that time, you could not uh, select the country, because without selecting the country, it would not allow it to proceed. It's another glitch. Why it should be dependent on the company, right? So if you like just to uh, put on the family. Uh, well, well, good, good example, actually, uh, good example. And then uh, speed, okay? 
So uh, what happens if you access the sidebar model? Okay. Uh, this is actually very valid testing. And if you think that the modern era is gone, it's not the case. A lot of people still using Galab connection. And there's a modern company, which is US Robotics, if you hear about that, heard about that company. It's called US Robotics. They were very popular, maybe say 15 or 20 years from now, a bit ago. And they're still in business. They're still producing modems. And uh, companies buy these models. Why? Because they like to test the websites using the modem connection. Okay? So what happens if you access the website with the modem? You may say, okay, uh, since things are starting to appear very slowly on the website, but uh, they, the things may appear not only slowly, but differently. Okay? For example, if you have nice images on the website, and they started to appear partially or some kind of ugly form, that's not acceptable. Okay, so you have to reward that. Uh, and then uh, check size and check image size specification. That will, uh, this uh, test case will cover during the HTML class. If you remember, if you specify image size incorrectly, uh, compared with the uh, actual image size, you may get distortions on the website. Okay, because website is actually reserved the space as specified in HTML code, not as uh, actual image size. Okay, you have to test that. Fortunately, this can be automated. Okay, fortunately, you don't need to do it manually because it's a lot of manual work. Okay, getting the actual image size, getting the size for the HTML code, that's a headache. Okay, we can automate that, and we're going to do that. So, um, accessibility. This is actually a very interesting area. How accessible the site is. Okay, assuming that you don't have keyboard, or you, you don't have mouse, you have only keyboard. Can you easily navigate that? I tried once, uh, uh, my mouse actually also broken, broken. I tried to access Yahoo just to check my email. You know, it was very, very big experience just to pressing the top key <laughs> until I hit the right, the right uh, link. Because this link was not in, the, were not in order, okay? The actual saying, okay, a couple of other clicks, okay, I missed several times. I had to go through all the URLs which are published in the page. Not good, okay? It's not very difficult to do, just uh, uh, assigning indexes, but uh, problematic. Uh, what happens if you uh, look at your page in a text browser? Obviously, you should not expect that the images will be shown, but nevertheless, the textual information, the information which is published on the website, should be available in a nice format. Not distorted, should be still, should be able to still to read it. Okay. Uh, uh, you should have the, the try different browsers which you covered. Uh, we have to uh, try the printed pages. This is also typically this test case is forgotten, but it's a very valid test case. What happens if user prints the website, the page? Okay. So uh, typically, in most of the cases, page is distorted. Okay. That's observed on every single day. Okay. Page is distorted. Uh, what uh, what happens with, uh, 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 is that when you print the page, typically browser pages, the browsers also print it. Another browser uh, frame is also created, which which are not interested in completely. So uh, m uh, websites now try to provide this link, which is a printer icon shown. If you click on that link, it shows the page uh, loaded in a separate pop-up. Okay, and that page does not have absolutely any controls. So, so you print that page. Uh, printer friendly. Yes, yes, absolutely. You have to test that. You cannot ignore it. Okay. This is very valid test because you also have no control what if user tries to print it. So in many, many cases you cannot believe it. So a lot of web pages and websites are not printed for a family. Okay. So you print that, text is distorted, it's actually, text is actually wrapped in the correct way. And then uh, line breaks, uh, breaks are in correct places, uh, form, font is distorted and comes in different, it's bad. Okay. You definitely have to provide this uh, possibility to print it. Okay. So, uh, what happens if JavaScript is turned off? Because, okay, we put a lot of JavaScript there, we put a lot of coding there, and we say, you know, functionality is dependent on JavaScript. But it's also possible that the end user switched off uh, JavaScript for various reasons. Okay. Uh, what happens then? Okay. Maybe you cannot show the web page at all. Maybe you get some errors, debugging errors, whatever. Or maybe you show the message saying, you know what, in order to use our website functionality or expose our website functionality, you definitely have to use JavaScript. 
Okay. So some websites actually erroneously put message saying your browser is old. Like for example, if you're using, if you're using Internet Explorer for version three or so. Okay. It's not correct. JavaScript might be turned off, but not necessarily because you use old browser, which does not support uh, JavaScript. Okay. So you have to put appropriate message there. Okay. You have to actually eliminate this possibility because if you are doing some business, you should expect that someone will call your company and say, you know what, what JavaScript is. And then what happens next? That the uh, uh, technician who is a small customer support technician say, what JavaScript? Let me ask my manager. And then probably say four or five people will be involved until someone will say, wait a sec, we were showing this message on the Okay. So just imagine how much, how many, uh, much resources you will consume on the company. Yeah. So you have to provide an explanation of that. Not only, uh, basically, it involves a lot of thought. Okay. 